Hey guys, Buckskin Dave here. I hope you had a great, thankful day. Um, you'll probably see this on Saturday, it's Friday, so <clears throat> I think I had a little bit too much uh, to eat and what I was thankful for yesterday. I'm kind of dragging a little today, <clears throat> but uh, I'm going to start planning this uh, sharps build. We've got an action here. I'm going to start making my measurements and planning. I'm not going to do any machining today, uh, but I want to get it ready so when I start machining, I'll have all my, I'll thought it out and uh, and planned out everything. When when it comes to cutting the threads, cutting the barrel, lining everything up, and chambering, you want to put a lot of thought into it. So that later you don't have things that you need to change, fix, or with any real bad luck, uh, you don't want to have to buy another barrel. And if you mess up that stub, that's pretty much it for that barrel. First, um, let's go outside with Sarah, and uh, she's going to shoot my uh, 54 caliber um, Hawken, early Hawken. So here we go. Sarah's going to use this 54. Uh, she still has an elk tag, muzzleloader elk tag, so she's going to give this one a try and see how she shoots it. That was a hit. That was pretty close to center, too. Good hold. So this is the 54 caliber, early, well, it's kind of an early style hawking, but it is percussion. Uh, 30, 36 inch barrel. Um, this one, a couple of years ago in the muzzleloader deer season, took us a pretty nice deer. Perhaps you remember. Anyway, Sarah's going to use this gun for her elk hunt this year. Okay, so let's try the 100 yard gongs. See if she get her sight picture. I'd say I heard a ding. Good. You know your sight picture now for yep. 100 yards? So, one of the things that uh, one of the things that you could do, and I don't have to do it on this one, um, on a modern rifle, on an action, you would face this off. And, uh, but I've, I've done some measuring, and, and I believe it's it's tight enough. It's flat enough for this purpose. Um, the action is still put together. One of the things that's very important would be the distance. I'll bring you in close here. The distance from this face down to the bolt inside. That would kind of be your headspace. So you want to get some measurements. And I have. Uh, 765 thousandths and I measure it all the way around and on this one it, it, it it's kind of about average in about 755 thousandths so that's the distance your barrel stub is going to be that's the length it's going to be another thing that I do and this will help you if uh, you did want to face off that deal. Um, this has a metric thread in it. They're square threads. And uh, uh, the last one I built, I, I made this um, on, a, on an aluminum stub to make sure that I had uh, everything thread-wise the way I wanted it. And I cut it out of aluminum because aluminum is easy to cut. And uh, I'm checking it to make sure that these threads are what they say they are. You, you don't want to cut a barrel and then find out the threads are wrong. So I know the size of the thread. So you want to make, you're going to, we're going to have to turn the barrel stub down. To the, the diameter that we need here to thread it. 
And when we turn it down, we're going to turn it down to a shoulder, and that shoulder is going to press against this face. Okay, so let's take a look at the barrel. This is the stub, the barrel stub. And one of the things that I like to do, this barrel, by the way, is a 50, 50 caliber, or the Sharps 50. And so that makes it a 520 barrel. And uh, this one has 24 twist. Um, one of the things I do, and it's really a little bit, this one's really good. I've already measured it. Like on a muzzle loader or whatever, you have what's called run out. And when they, cha when they chamber, correction, when they bore this out, sometimes it doesn't come out perfect. It's usually only off by a few thousands. But if you have a few thousands fatter, a few thousands bigger, you can measure it between the groove and the flat of the barrel with your dial caliper. Um, I like to put the fatter part at the bottom because even though it's such a slight amount, it will cause the bullet to rise a, a tiny bit when it comes out. This yeah. barrel is built by um, C Sharps, and they were nice enough after I measured it all the way around to find out which flat I was going to want on the bottom and one on the top. They marked this barrel, a little divot here. This flat right here would be the one I want on the bottom. So they've kind of given me a little heads up. And when I measured it, we're, we're only talking a couple thousands, so it's probably negligible. Now, on a lot of things that you fit, you have three surfaces, especially on a muzzle loader. you have three surfaces that have to come to rest at the same place at the same time when you screw it in. And the first thing would be wherever you decide this shoulder is going to be along here. So um, if, you're, if you're fitting a gun with already cut out wood, you're going to have to figure out how that wood is cut because it'll come right at these little divots where the flat is, this rosetta. Um, this one I'll probably shape the wood so I can, I can make, and I've got some marks here. This is an approximate spot where I'm going to want to have my shoulder come up against the, the receiver. Okay. And when I say um, an approximate, I've live, left myself enough that I can trim a little more off if I want and still mean too close to the curvature of this where the flat begins. The reason is on this rifle, the way it is, if you take the block out of the, and, and you'll be taking this apart, if you take the block out, you can have a pretty long barrel stub, you see. It, it, it can go in. You can see the block in there is the blue thing. So if you take that out, you have all this extra space here. So you can make the stub longer than it's going to eventually be. And the first surfaces that have to come together are when you when you screw the barrel into the the receiver, you're going to want it to stop with this flat on the bottom, this flat on the top, and you're going to want it to be level with the receiver. If it's not level, when you look down the sights, you're going to look crooked. So it has to be level with the receiver. So as long as you make this stub short enough that it won't bump the back part of the action, it can go in there and take up some of that space where that block is you can do this surface first and get that exact thing in there where you want it, this top, this bottom, and it's tight to that shoulder that you've made. When you, when you, this is going to be reduced in size. Um, I forget what the exact size is, but it will be reduced. So there'll be a shoulder there, and, and your receiver will butt up against it.
once that is done, once your threading is done, and that's butted up against there, then you can start making the length that you want so that your block will come up and, and it'll be perfectly fitted so that it comes past uh, the back of the barrel. When you, on this 50, when I cut the chamber, the chamber reamer has an edge that will cut the um, rim. So when that cartridge is put in there, the back of the rim will be exactly flush with the back of the barrel. It'll be the second thing you put together. And then the third thing will be you'll want to shape this so it's rounded off inside the receiver. So I've marked, once, once I, I chuck this up, I've marked where I want to cut my, um, turn my barrel down approximately because this is the edge you're going to work with to, to get it to turn so that you have the flat you want up and the flat you want down and it's perfectly level. You'll take a little bit of this off and measure it and then take a little bit more until it turns and it's tightened to that point. That's that's the way I do it. So this other mark that I have here, this is barrel that's going to have to come off. Okay, um, this is about. We know we need seven hundred and fifty thousandths to head space it. Like I say, I do very approximations, very much uh, in this part because I'm going to I'm going to bring it into precise alignment when I make it. So this is, uh, I got uh, 870 thousandths approximately. I mean, it's not perfect, but that's how much I can leave on there and still screw this in and, and touch my, my shoulder here until I get the barrel turned in exactly where I want. So the first thing that I'll do when I put this in the lathe is I'll either face it off down to, to there or, or I'll cut it off. Probably it's not very much distance, so probably just as fast either way. So I'll cut that off and then I will turn it down to the size that I want the stub to be, the diameter. And, and then I'll get this down here, my face. I'll face it off and get it approximate. And then we'll start the threading. And after it's threaded, and it screws down, and the the um, receiver face hits this. Then we'll continue to take small amounts of metal off of here until everything lines up the way we want it. So that's kind of how I do that. Like I say, Sarah has a uh, Sarah has a muzzle loader hunt, and she's off this weekend, so. That's probably what I'll do, and I'll probably start turning this Monday or Tuesday and, and start putting it together. Um, and once I get this together, I'm still looking for some pieces of wood that I can fit to this gun and and put in there, and, and I'm still looking for that stuff. And then I have some small parts that I'll, excuse me, I'll have to make, and some of them I'll probably buy. I'll have to buy, as you can see, this doesn't have any spring tension. There's a spring I'll have to buy that uh, gives this a little bit of tension. And then there's a block that that spring attaches to that you'll machine. I usually machine a dovetail and that goes into the barrel. And that spring will attach to that. And also my back wood uh, forearm screw will go into that piece. And so I need to get one of those and, uh, and some screws that, that'll work uh, in, the, in the parts that I get. So, and uh, it's a it's a specific screw that they have for the wood, but you know you can usually find something that looks close enough. But I want to get screws, and then I want to get little metal pistuskins to put in there for the screw to go through and come up against them. They kind of look good, and they they make the screw hold against the wood a lot better. So anyway. One of the other things I want to do today, it was starting to snow a little bit, just like flutters, nothing big. 
I did want to shoot the Gemmer a little bit today. Um, maybe some offhand shooting at 100 yards. So it's a good gun to practice offhand shooting with because the front of it's really heavy. So it'll build up your four, forearms and your muscles to hold it up straight. So let's go out and shoot that a little bit and uh, we'll call it a day for today. So uh, for any of you that haven't tuned into earlier videos, this is the Gemmer we built. Um, it's 4590 and it has, uh, this one has a 16 twist barrel on it and a maple stock. This is a number five rolling block action and it is, uh, it's probably about a 19 to 100 to 1905 action, pretty good strong action. So the rolling block, you pull the hammer back in the open chamber and you place your your round in and it's ready to fire so I haven't shot it in a while so let's see how I do offhand on that hundred yard going and these are all black powder rounds 400 correction yeah these are 400 and uh, uh, 20 grain lead Right. Nice. Whoops. Guess I need a little more practice. Okay, I've been shooting a little. My arm's getting tired now, so I'm going to shoot a couple more and then we'll clean her. Ooh, I knew I was going to miss that. Starting to wobble. Let's try one more and we'll clean her out. Actually, I've been doing pretty good. Uh, you saw a couple of my misses, and uh, I think in this just one I just did. So, but the, most of the other ones I've shot have been been hits. I'm just getting wobbly now because it's a heavy gun to hold. Ooh. Nice to end up on a hit. I like ending up on a positive note. I have one more round. I probably shouldn't shoot it. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, primers are, I, I've been fine. I mean, I make my own bullets. Uh, Black powder, before I heard the news about the GoX plant closing, um, I stocked up pretty good on black powder. Primers. I check all the suppliers every morning uh, to see if they got primers, and they seem to be a tough. It seems to be a tough acquisition as primers. Um, seems like there's plenty of them on the internet, um, but they sure are proud of them. And uh, so, I guess if it gets to the point where I need to buy primers, I'm just going to have to pay more for them, or stop shooting. And that ain't an option. Uh, especially when you miss as many times as I did, you need to practice. Uh, a lot of matches are offhand matches, so I kind of like to shoot a lot offhand. Um, I'll shoot from a rest to see what my aiming point is and where the rifle's working, and and then I'll go to uh, then I'll go to the uh, 
offhand and see how I'm working. So let's fire this last one and hope we don't miss. All right. We like finishing up on a good note, positive note. Let's go in and run a patch on this and finish up for this episode. So, one of the nice things about the Gammer is it does come with a wiping stick, just like the Hawkins and, well, and all your mother words do. Uh, comes in handy if you want to clean the gun into the field. See so how we're working on this one in the shop. I'm just going to use my just use my shop stick, and uh, I don't do much anything special. I shot all black powder in this one, so I'll use a black powder solvent, run it out, um, then I'll run a brush down it a couple of times, and then wipe it again until the patches come out clean and uh, light coat of oil. And that's all I really do to them. So. That's all I got for this episode. I'm Buckskin Dave. Thanks for joining me. Uh, stick around. We're going to start working on this gun next week. And uh, we'll, you'll be through, going through all the processes that I go through to get it barreled and chambered and ready for wood. Um, I'm glad you had a good Thanksgiving. I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Bye-bye.